The first run on our list is any percent speedrun of How Smart Are You? This game is a flash game that was released on Congregate in September of 2013, where you play as aliens exploring planet Earth to gain intelligence of Earth civilization. You have to travel through a few different rooms with puzzles to gain a higher intelligence. If you've already beaten the game and try to play again, the final door will be unlocked. Once you go through that room, play the cutscene, and leave, you can hop on the spaceship being able to leave Earth. This is listed as an any percent speedrun, but since you're playing on an already completed file, I'd assume this would actually be considered a new game plus any percent run. The thing is, is I found out that you don't even need to go to the final room. You can just start the run and go back to the ship. I also found out that if you start the game from the endgame screen instead of the title screen, it will start you in front of the ship instead of inside the pyramid, allowing you to complete the run in seconds. This skip discovery saves roughly 14 seconds from the any percent new game plus category and is completely pointless. The next game is called Near Midnight, and it's a great horror game available on Steam for the low price of only $3. In this game a daughter apparently kills her family, and you as an investigator have to go into the house to figure out what's going on. After finding her like three times, she disappears telling you to come find her again, and the last time you find her she kills you, and it's game over. The world record for this game is 16.67 seconds. This is a really short game even if you're not speedrunning it, and this guy somehow managed to play the game for 4.3 hours, and he rated it as good. Now he rated it good even knowing that he was able to beat it in 22 seconds. That's some dedication. The next run on our list is called The Dropper. Now this is a game that was made within Minecraft, but since it technically is a full game itself, it makes it eligible for this list. You pretty much just drop down into a pit and see you can do it the fastest. There seems to be a death abuse mechanic that allows you to skip to the end quicker, and it makes this speed run 16.046 seconds long. The next one on our list is one of my personal favorites. It's called Super Sonic Turbo Gun Adventure 2 Turbo. This is a fan-made Sonic game where you traverse through a beautiful 3D environment surrounded by several Oogmen. But luckily you're equipped with a shotgun to fend them off. There's no requirements to get into the end so you can pretty much just jump through the level and get to the end. Or I guess to the end of the game. The world record for this run is 13.21 seconds. The next game is called This Is The Only Level. This deceptive game which contains only one level, but many stages, was published on Congregate in August of 2009. There are 30 stages in total to beat, allowing you to beat the first and only level. There's a glitch in the game that after stage 3, the elephant you control gets stuck in the end stage 2 for every stage afterwards, allowing you to automatically beat each stage. There's also an in-game timer used to keep track of time, and the fastest someone is able to do this was in 12.6 seconds. The next speedrun is the any percent speedrun of House of Caravan. House of Caravan is a first person adventure game where you have to complete puzzles to escape a mansion you have been kidnapped into. There's an interesting mechanic involving the objects in this game that if you look down while holding them, they will suspend you in air and ultimately out of bounds. You can do this with a chair in the first room to get yourself out of bounds to get yourself a key, and then go out of bounds again to use this key on the door to leave the mansion. This brings the speedrun down to 12.446 seconds by the popular YouTuber Critical. I'd love to show more of his run in this video, but I have a lot more games to cover. But there is a good chance it can make its way into a different video. Who knows? I am once again the House of Caravan speedrunning world record holder. I want today, 8-9-2016, August 9th of the year 2016, to be remembered as Earth's Independence Day. If humans ever become a Type 3 civilization, I want August 9th, 2016 to be the day Earthlings say Earth came out of the darkness and into the Type 3 civilization light. The next game is called Escape the Bathroom, which is a popular Flash game that was posted on AddictingGames.com in May of 2009 with over 13.5 million plays. In this game you're trapped in a bathroom which has its exits blocked by lasers. You'll have to escape the bathroom by using items around you. The fastest way to do this is by finding a hairdryer, filling up the bathtub, and dropping the hairdryer inside of it, which will short circuit the building and deactivate the lasers. With some fast clicking, this game can currently be beat in 12 seconds. The next game is an RPG known as Half Minute Hero. This RPG is almost opposite to modern day RPGs in the fact that you have to beat the game in the time of 30 seconds. This time will expire while you're on the main overworld where you fight monsters. The time won't expire when you're in the shops though and you can use some of the money you gain killing monsters to gain 3 more seconds as well as more weapons. The main strategy is to figure out how many monsters you should kill and items and time you should buy to spend the least amount of time overall. There's another game mode of this game that uses the 30 second concept but instead is 3 seconds. Doe Wolf is the only speedrunner for this category, and he was able to do this with only spending 11.55 seconds in game time. So if you want to play an RPG but can't stand the long cutscenes and long turn based battles, this may be the game for you. The next game yet again is a pretty popular Flash game. In Rainbow Day's Sims Date, you play as Marty Stu, an avid target employee who has caught the eye of Prince Dreamboat. 
In order to impress him, you have to make yourself irresistible in 7 days time by working and purchasing merchandise. The fastest way to beat this game is by sleeping all 7 of the days to raise your HP and then work non-stop at Target till you have $400. After you buy 2 pairs of man heels and go to sleep, you'll wake up to your date with Prince Dreamboat. Doing this allows you to beat the game in about 10 seconds. The next speedrun is the Google Doodle Hurdles from 2012. If you're not familiar with Google Doodles, they are changes or doodles that are made to the Google logo during special events like holidays, anniversaries, and the lives of famous artists, pioneers, and scientists. This started all the way back in 2000, and the doodles were so well received that now there is a team of talented illustrators that work on them, and have made over 2000 doodles over the years. This doodle wasn't only a doodle, but it was a short game that you could use your arrow keys to run faster and the spacebar to jump over hurdles. This doodle was made to celebrate the London 2012 Olympics for Australia's Sally Pearson not only winning the event, but setting an Olympic world record. Obviously, since this is an incredibly short game, it can also be beaten very quickly. The fastest time listed on speedrun.com was an in-game time of 9.4 seconds. The next game is called I Wanna Learn to Bunny Hop, which is an I Wanna Be the Guy fan game. You may be familiar with popular titles of these games including Boshi, Not Another Needle Game, or Camellia 3, which are all pretty popular speedrun games as well. Bunny Hop is a relatively short challenge which you have to bunny hop around 4 obstacles and 4 levels to beat the game. You can bunny hop by jumping shortly after you finish your first jump and get enough distance to hop around the obstacle. Speedrunners have been able to do this in time of only 8.7 seconds. The next game is a very interesting game that is still in the alpha stages of development called We Happy Few. It's set in a retro-futuristic 1960s England setting where everyone in the town is always happy as long as they take their joy. Joy is a drug that is required by everyone in the town to take which rids any problems they may have and makes them happy. You play as a character named Arthur as he tries to escape this procedurally generated world. However, the only way to escape is to get by the townspeople without them realizing you haven't taken your drugs, or they won't take too kindly to that. You only have one life in this game, and every time you replay it, you'll be faced with different challenges and quests. The game does however have a prologue to introduce the game to you. In this prologue, the game faces you with a big decision. Do you take the joy and cure your happiness? Or instead of defacing and covering up old news articles, you take a stand to escape the lie you've been living? While the choice may be obvious, you do have the option to take the joy which then plays the credits which would technically be the fastest way to beat the game. A lot of people were confused by this, but my best explanation is that if you take the joy, then life doesn't change and he continues doing that forever, therefore there is no game. It does seem a bit ironic that a game that wants you to rebel, forces you to play in conformity. The next game on this list is The Graveyard developed by the game studio Tale of Tales. In this game you play as an elderly woman who walks through a graveyard till she makes her way to a bench to sit on. Shortly afterwards, a cutscene takes place with some Dutch music as the woman recalls the deaths of the people she's held close and contemplates her life. There isn't much gameplay other than leaving the graveyard. This is an interesting approach to make a video game to convey art, but it was met with some mixed reviews from gamers because of the lack of gameplay. Surprisingly, with this already being a short game, the fastest way to beat it isn't from going through the normal playthrough, but by simply walking backwards and walking through the gate, effectively beating the game in only 6.2 seconds. There's a full version of this game on Steam that adds the chance that at any point during the gameplay, the woman will die. This is priced at $5 on the Steam market. The next game on this list is another dating simulator called John Cena's Sexy High School Adventure. You play as a character Fuko-san who has had enough of being bullied and enrolls into his new school, John Cena High. Since we're discussing the game, I'll tell you that the fastest way to beat the game is after meeting John Cena and attending class taught by Mr. Cena, you'll be confronted by the school bully, Johnny. If you decide to pick a fight with him, you'll shortly realize your grave mistake. He hits you in the head, pins you down, and after the 3 seconds are up, you won't be getting up. And you're dead. This bad ending route allows you to beat the game in 4.05 seconds. The next game on this list is Half-Life 2 Lost Coast. This is an additional level for Half-Life 2 and is used as a technology demo to showcase the Source Engine's high dynamic range rendering. But since this is listed as a separate game and is downloaded separately, completing the level would also be considered completing the game. At the beginning of the game, you have access to an RPG, and because of the game physics, you're able to shoot the RPG at a boulder and maintain the velocity from it to fly up to the metal box, which marks the end of the level. Speedrunners have been able to beat this game in only 3.18 seconds. The next game on this list is called Jack 2 Flash Game. There isn't any information about this game posted online, other than a single post on the PlayStation forums from 2005, so I can't say for sure whether any of this information about the game is accurate, but here's what I got from it. Apparently this was a Flash game that was made in the likeness of Jack 2 and was offered on the European PlayStation site. 
In this game you complete a couple different activities of interacting with the Jack Chu world, and weirdly enough, partaking in the activities he did while he spent his jail time, like doing pull-ups, killing bugs, and a PG version of the knife game where you use a spoon to stab in between Jack's fingers instead of a knife. If you've ever played a Jack and Daxter game before, and completed it till the end, you would know about a game mode called Hero Mode, where you play through the game with your previous acquisitions. This is an option in the Flash game, and I'm assuming it marks all of the activities as completed, so you can go back through the game and play whichever activities you want to, without replaying them all. So since every activity is marked as completed, you can start the game and beat it. This makes the Hero Mode Any% percent speedrun of this game completable in less than 2 seconds. There are surprisingly 3 speedrunners and 5 runs submitted on speedrun.com for this game, and is moderated by a guy who's never even submitted one of those runs. Okay guys, so the next game on this list is called Perplexus Rookie. Perplexus is a puzzle game where you have to move this device to transport a ball around 70 barriers to get it to the end. The Rookie is the first game in the series and is supposed to be an introductory for the puzzles you'll face later on. Even though this game does have barriers, it is possible to get the ball to jump around them, and if you do correct movements, you can get the ball to the end of level in seconds. I know I said that speedruns were video games at the beginning, but this game is actually speedrun quite a bit, and once you learn the puzzles, the main objective is to try and complete it fast. So although it's not a traditional speedrun, it's still speedrunnable nonetheless. The next game is a 1998 video game called Clue for the PC. If you've ever heard of the board game Clue, this video game is based off that game. In this mystery game, you'll have to find the murderer, weapon, and the room that the murdered Dr. Black was killed in. After starting the game, it's possible to go to the accusation window and spam click all three of the options and hope that what you click was actually correct, and you'll be able to beat the game in under one second. The next game on this list is Civilization V. Civilization is a turn-based strategy game where you manage a unit containing civilian and military forces to found new cities and take over other civilizations. Part of calculating the score at the end of the game has to do with how big your civilization is among a few other factors. One of the factors is how many tiles your civilization has. There's one civilization known as the Shoshone that gets a bonus number of tiles when a city is founded. So if you were to play as a Shoshone, set the number of turns to 1, and enable time victory, it's possible to beat the game in roughly half a second. Alright guys, the final game on this list is called Where's an Egg? Much like Clue, this is another mystery game where you have to help the police find an egg. There are 9 suspects which you can interrogate and use the information they tell you to figure out who the suspect is that has the egg by shooting them. Right when you start the game, you'll be presented with the first suspect. If you shoot them right away, and they happen to be the one carrying the egg, you'll win the game. Ellipsis was able to do this in only 0.183 seconds, or 11 frames while running 60 frames per second. If the first suspect you shoot isn't actually the egg carrier, you can shoot two more people before losing, giving you at least a 1 out of 3 chance of beating the game every playthrough. Alright guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. I don't normally do top 20s, but when I started making the video, I didn't think I would be talking about certain games for so long, but I ended up doing so. I wanted to leave the full top 20 in, as well to show the different variety of games that people speedrun, or just games that can be completed very quickly. Huge thanks to Francis Sig Stanko for compiling the data on this list by parsing through speedrun.com, making this list extremely accurate. So as long as the speedrun is submitted to speedrun.com, then it would appear on this list. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like because it doesn't take a lot of time to do, and it's the best way to show support, and subscribe for more speedrunning related content. I hope you have a beautiful life.